I literally walked in on my wife cheating on me with her ex. What do I do? Together almost seven years, married for just over one. She dated him ages 18, 22, then someone else for a couple years, then me 2012 until now. We are 31. He's 40-ish. Long story, TLDR at the bottom. We do everything together, including running a successful small business. Our friend group makes fun of how perfect our falling in love story is, and other than this problem, it has been a very happy, fun, successful relationship. Over the years, she saw him occasionally. Birthdays, holidays, etc. Maybe once every couple months. Always for an hour or two, dinner or coffee. I never, not once, saw him. He is married and has a child and always hid from his wife he was hanging out with my wife. Note, he cheated on my wife several times while they were dating, so I have always been baffled why she wanted to keep in contact with him. He also was in a serious accident where she rehabilitated him, feeding him in bed for months, and then he cheated on her again as soon as he was back on his feet. He also made her clean his entire house all the time, and inspected her work. She doesn't have many friends, so she always said it was nice to meet up with an old friend who share history. Whatever, I didn't think much of it at first, and I trusted her, even though I disagreed with her. So one day, a couple of years in, I see her phone light up from the coffee table. He texted her, I glance, and it is a super sexual kind of joke. I freak out inside. I talk to her about and say it is very inappropriate yada yada. She says she'll talk to him and it will never happen again. I write it off as him being a dirtbag. Few months later, it happens again. Now I am very freaking right out. So I start reading through her text while she's asleep because you know, as embarrassing and gross as it is, I need to know. Lots of sexual jokes or general remember that time. Also text being critical of me. I wake her up screaming, saying she can never see him again if this continues. She doesn't see him for several months. Somehow, over the next year or so, she talks me into being okay with it again. His cat dies. We need real estate advice. He's in that line of work. I don't know, whatever, uh, I say okay, because it's been like a year. This is around year four or five. It seems fine and normal for a while, but I keep reading the text because gross. I find some more sleazy jokes. I snap and say, for real, this is the last time. Now a year later, somehow once again, I come around to allowing them hang out, but I am not happy about it. And I must add, I have been vehemently not happy about it and telling her so. And it is our sole problem. And it always comes up how much I freaking hate him. But I love her, so I let her. And it's only every couple month or so, so whatever. Anyway, flash forward to the last couple months. I notice they are talking way more often. Lots of phone calls and texts. We have each other's locations because we are married and she insisted. I never look, but now I start to look. I check a few weeks ago. She, she's at an address I don't recognize. Call her to see what's up. She sounds odd, says she is at a friend's house. I know where this person lives, and it is not the location she is currently at. So I say, say hello to X's name for me, assuming that's what she is doing. She rushes home. She is so scared that she was caught hanging out with him, and in a lie. She is so scared she starts puking and doesn't sleep all night. I am mad as hell, but I forgive her. We are fine for a couple weeks. She is still texting with him lots. We work a lot all week together and have fun. He is around in her life enough over the years that I can't help thinking of him often and comparing myself to him. He is super rich. I'm definitely not. Thoughts of them pop in my mind, of them being together, even while we are being intimate. I tell my mind to F off, but it keeps happening. I am losing trust. After dropping her off at home after work, I go back to do more work mentioning I'll be out until 2 a.m. or so. I get tired and come home early thinking we could just watch Netflix. She isn't home, even though I just spoke with her. I check her location, and she is nearby his house. The location updates. She is on her way home. 
I see the dot stop at the top of the street. I wait ten or so minutes. I walk up our street expecting to just surprise them, meet him for the first time, introduce myself very awkwardly, and then ask her why she is lying about seeing him. As I walk closer, I don't see two silhouettes. I get closer and find them in his car, but she's on his lap, kissing him, arms wrapped around him. I pause for a few seconds in shock. I open his door fast. I scream, punch him in the face. He looks scared and confused. I throw my ring onto his dash and scream some sort of speech. Storm away back home. Grab cloths and drive two hours north to stay at my dad's. I think of all the times they must have been together. How could it be possible that the only time I have ever seen his face, they are kissing? Out of the dozens and dozens of times I have let them get together, it can't just be the one time, right? I come back to town. We talk. I yell and scream and break stuff, smash a chair, ask him for the truth. She says she also kissed him when his cat died, four years ago, but those were the only two times, and they were because she was trying to make him happy. My trust is shattered. I don't believe those could be the only two times, after all the sexual joking texts. And I mean we are adults, who the F only just makes out for a bit. Even if that is the truth, I have told her for years that he is trying to be more than a friend. She always just brushed it off and continues to convince me that they are just friends and it's no big deal, even though she knew I really didn't want her to see him. Even all of her friends and family have continuously scolded her for seeing him after what he did to her. Considering all that, and the fact that she cheated on me four years ago when his cat died, like how dare she? Anyway, I've read online that couples counseling and one-on-one -on -one counseling is the only way to get out of this alive. But to be honest, I'm not feeling very hopeful. This was a building problem over years, my only problem with her, and it exploded. I am not a violent person. I have been in one fight my entire life in grade seven, and now I have punched a man in the face. I just don't know if I believe her. She deleted him off everything and promised she will never see him again. But who knows how long that will last. I guess she just never got over him and just lied to herself thinking it was just a friendship and would do anything to get that attention from him. Anyway, anybody else gone through this? What do I do? I hate that I'm posting this. I just don't want our friends to know. Thanks, TLDR. Happily, together for almost seven years. She sees her ex first love every so often throughout the years. I find suspect texts over the years. We fight about it. She continually convinces me it's no biggie. Time goes by. Same problem, but in frequent happy life. We get married. Lots of love. A few days ago, I walk up our street and find them in his car. She's on his lap, kissing him. I open his door. Fast, I scream. I punch him in the face. He looks scared and confused. My first violence since seventh grade. I throw my ring onto his dash, yell some sort of speech and storm away, and drive two hours north to stay at my dad's. We try talking, or maybe getting therapy. Now what do I do? Let's see comments. Leave her leave. She cheated on you. Chances are she will again. Why would you want to stay with someone who doesn't respect you or your marriage? Tough love here. You are an absolute doormat. Her saying she only kissed him twice to make him feel better after his cat died and now. I honestly worry about you if you think that's anything but laughable. She's straight up cheating with him for a long time while they joke and make fun of you. Needles to say you need to leave. I hope you have some options for dissolving your professional connection as well. Now is a good time to stop being a pushover. It's clear what you have to do. Leave her. No amount of therapy will get through to her. She has zero respect for you, and you have to learn the meaning of the word nino. There are just some things you have to say no to. You need to leave immediately. Well, first of all, I'm really sorry you have to go through this. It sounds really awful, and I can only imagine what kind of emotions you have been processing. 
As much as you love her, it sounds like she continually disrespected you and had some kind of relationship with him. That trust is hard to build back. Me personally, I'd probably just move on. I would have so much contempt for her lies and cheating. People who love their spouse don't painstakingly plan out a years-long affair. This isn't a drunken one-night fling with some real remorse for a terrible mistake. Take the blinders off. She's playing you, dude. She's been screwing him for years, years. Get out now. How many chances does she get? Do you want to spend the next seven years wondering if she will be with him again today? She has carried on this emotional affair for so long, she doesn't know how to go on without it. Even if you can get past this, I think you need to make her believe it is over so she will take you seriously. Tell her it is over and start divorce proceedings. She needs to hit rock bottom before you can build up trust again. Let's see another story. My girlfriend cheated on me and I found out about it in the most brutal way imaginable. I, 25, and my now ex-girlfriend, 26, were together since we were 14 and 15 respectively. We were each other's first everything. Our relationship was a near fairy tale for the most part. She was the perfect girlfriend I could have asked for. A few aberrations over all those years, in form of arguments, none your regular healthy couple couldn't relate with, and as infrequent as they could have come, are all that kept it from being a perfect relationship. To set the context, we recently celebrated her business's previous quarter's financials with a vacation in Mekonos. This was in early October, just over a couple of months ago. It was all perfect as perfect could be. Our relationship was in cruise control. It was all solid right up until the end of October of this year. She used to surprise me with these weekend getaways, dates, and gifts. Nothing too fancy, but just about enough to make me melt. Then, none of it for well over a month. Nada. She's initiated physical intimacy the most out of us both. She's always had a higher libido than I. Again. None of that for over a month. I had no reason to suspect anything and just brushed it off by attributing it to her work stress. She's been working her arse off for the past six years to build the aforementioned business that has finally started paying off its dividends. Of all these changes in the status quo of our relationship, what stuck out the most by far was an incident that happened earlier in November. She was out for a night of pub crawl with her girlfriends. Soho pub crawls are kind of a ritual with them, the usual chin wag over drinks. She wanted me to go along, but I couldn't, as my local football, soccer for Americans, team was playing that evening, and being a season ticket holder, I rarely miss their games, if at all. That being said, I've joined in as well as to sat out these crawls multiple times over the years. She's almost always acquiesced to me, being at a football game over almost any event that's ever clashed with it. Red flag one. I get back home just around midnight after heading over to my sister's for a couple pints after the match. She texted me she'd be late and asked me to not stay up and that her friend, let's call her A, would drop her off. I stayed up anyway and texted A, who's their group's designated driver by the virtue of her sobriety, to drive safely. Imagine my surprise when A said my ex-girlfriend had left the crawl earlier and had informed her that she'd be taking a cab home, much against her girlfriend's protests. Her cab finally pulled up in front of our house at about 2 a.m., went in for a kiss when she got back home. To my horror, she turned away and made her way to our bed and passed out. Never had she ever turned down a kiss from me up until at that point in time. I brushed it off to her being absolutely pissing drunk and let it slide. The next morning I asked her about returning home in a cab, even though A was supposed to be dropping her off. She responded by saying that she couldn't stay there any longer owing to a terrible headache and decided to book a cab back home so as to not want her girlfriends having to call it an early night. Now it takes a maximum of an hour in peak London traffic to get over to our house from Soho. If her timeline is to be believed, 
She was in the cab for almost four hours. She could see me trying to piece it together, but quickly went in for a kiss. My naivete, coupled with love, took over, and I went on with the rest of my day without giving it a second thought. Red flag two. Fast forward three weeks. I tried getting on her Instagram to delete a story featuring me in an embarrassing pose that she posted and teased me over. We have always known each other's social media logins and passwords to all devices. I try logging in to her Instagram by putting in her username and password to no avail. She got a notification and knew I tried to log in on her account, gave me a wry smile and revealed she'd changed her password in anticipation of me trying to log in and deleting that story. Fair enough, I would go on to accept this version. What I couldn't really wrap my head around was her removing her Instagram profile photo she's had for the past seven years, featuring the both of us and updating it with a solo photo of herself. I was hurt, but again, my naivete led me to believe it was much ado about nothing. Post continued, Red Flag 3, D-Day 1. As December was upon us, I was supposed to travel to India, China, and Singapore on a business assignment. My company was to send me over for 26 days, as that's what we'd estimated the maximum time frame to be allocated for the project by factoring in the worst case scenarios. We'd never been away from each other for this long. She was distraught, from what I could tell, she genuinely was, but accepted me going away for that long after a night of us cuddling and crying our eyes out. The next few days were rough for us both. The time zone misalignment restricted us to a limited amount of FaceTime. D-Day, perhaps the first, was just two weeks into December. On a FaceTime call, I saw what looked like a bra on the floor and immediately recognized it wasn't hers, owing to its color. I asked her about it, and she tried to angle the camera such that it was no longer visible and deliberately moved over to that space and pointed the camera at the floor. Of course, it was no longer there. She has to have kicked it out of sight. My heart was trying its best to dispel any notions of some other girl being there with her, but my eyes wouldn't let me unsee what they saw. I couldn't sleep that night. Red Flag 4, D-Day 2. I had never gotten over her hiding that bra on the floor from my sight. By this point, doubt was starting to rear its ugly head in. My project was over almost a week before it was expected to. Decided to surprise her with an early homecoming. My cab from the airport was possibly the longest one I ever had to take, or at least it felt like it. All I was thinking of on my ride back home was her kiss I'd been deprived of for weeks, but I'd be lying if I told you I couldn't sense an impending doom in the back of my mind, thanks to that FaceTime call. I reach home with a box of chocolates and wine, let myself in without any noise so as to surprise her. All good up until this point, hear the shower running. I was in half a mind to join her in there, but decided against it in favor of planting myself at the door and recording her reaction on my camera. Weirdly enough, our bedroom door opens, and there she is, wrapped in a towel, about to hit the shower. My mind couldn't comprehend why she'd left the shower and steam running before getting in. But then all pieces were beginning to fall into place when she saw me, and her face turned pale in trepidation, almost as if she were looking at a ghost and not the girl she's loved all this time. I yell, hey, and rush into her for a kiss. We kiss, but there's absolutely no reciprocation from her end. Here's how it played out after I pulled away, and she was still looking at me in shock without saying a word. Me. Babe, are you okay? Why are you looking at me like that, and why is the shower running? Her. You were supposed to come back after Christmas. Words cannot express how gutted I was the moment she would utter these exact words after us being apart for weeks. Just as I was about to tell her I finished my work earlier than expected, I hear a girl's voice calling out her name from the shower. My legs started shaking at the very moment. Something I'd only ever seen other people write or say was happening to me. 
We burst out crying. I slumped against the wall by the bathroom as it started to dawn upon me that the supposed love of my life, a girl with whom I'd envisioned growing old, was about to jump into the shower with another girl. She rushed in, asked the other girl to get dressed, and escorted her out of our house. I barely got a look at the absolute vixen that turned my life upside down, the she-devil, for whom my ex-girlfriend decided to throw away over a decade of memories. She got down beside me and burst into tears, apologizing profusely. I pushed her away and she hit her head on the bedside table. It was the only time either of us ever got violent. Despite that, she refused to stay away and came back in trying to wrap herself around me. For the next couple of hours, it was more of the same, her being apologetic, groveling, and me crying to the point of passing out on the floor. She picked me up, put me on the bed, and went out to fix me some tea. I locked her out and sunk back into the bed for another bout of tears. All this while, her trying to explain her actions from the other side of the door. Now comes the worst part of it all. I was rummaging through the wardrobe for our spare stash of marijuana to calm myself down and realize the gravity of what had transpired. I found a ring with our initials carved onto it and a receipt towards down payment for the house we are currently renting, which made her digression hit harder. The girl, the love of my life was about to make me hers for the rest of our lives. So close yet so far, the aftermath. She admitted to having slept with the other girl, the absolute wretched woman she met with on that pub crawl on multiple occasions. She won't let me leave the house, we split the rent, and instead moved out to the guest bedroom to give me space. I haven't so much as let her touch me ever since that fateful morning. She doesn't know that I know about her plan, or what's left of it, to propose me. I keep trying to get her to open up over why she'd sell our future for a meaningless fling, but all she has to say for herself is that she doesn't know why she did it. She's completely cut off ties with the other girl. I know for a fact that she was nothing more than a fling to her, yet I don't think I can ever get over a betrayal this immense. What am I looking for here? I am almost certain that I want to leave her. The only sliver of dread that's holding me back is the fact that I will never love any other girl the way I loved her. This could perhaps change, but if I were a betting lady, I'd not bet against it. There will always be that. What if I'd given her another chance in the back of my mind? No matter which girl I end up with in the future, if at all, she seems to be truly remorseful of her actions. She's been an absolute peach of a girlfriend before this, arguably more so than I ever was. Makes me wonder if I'm to blame a wee bit. If I would tagged along with her to the bloody pub crawl and she'd never have met the other girl. Has anyone here ever been betrayed by who they thought was the love of their life and yet went on to live out that happily ever after? I'm dead inside and devoid of tears at this point as I write this and ask myself whether I was really not good enough for her. Feels like I've lost in life. Update, it's over. I've decided to leave her. Over these past few days, I tried my hardest to forgive her and move past her digression, but I just couldn't. The one girl who had the privilege of my out-and-out -out trust decided to break it by letting her temporary carnal desires get the best of her. She's done everything she possibly could to stop me from leaving her for good, but yesterday the gravity of her actions probably manifested itself when she finally acquiesced to the fact that getting me to go back to loving her the way I used to is a fool's errand. To her credit, she didn't throw the cheater's book at me, contrary to the belief across quite a bit of posters on my previous post. Never labeled her actions to be a mistake. She still maintains that she doesn't know the true reason behind her actions except for wanting to experience the feeling of being with someone else who's not me. She'd back up anything and everything I'd tell to both sets of parents. She was okay with losing our mutual friends if it meant I'd stay. Her deal's always been 
Paint me a cheater all you want, however you want, as long as you don't leave me. She told me about her plan to propose me on my birthday. It's next month. Probably was one of the last ditch attempts to get me to reconsider. I don't know. I never told her I'd already found out about the ring and the deposit she put down on our house. Breaks me, as it'll forever be a painful reminder of us being almost over the finish line. Yesterday, I had her sit down to convey my decision of wanting to break up. Needless to say, a lot of crying and screaming ensued, on both sides. She thought I'd lost the plot. I won't get into the details, partly because it feels like I'd relive them, and partly because I'm absolutely knackered. But suffice to say, it's been the worst day of my life, bar none. Yes, more so than the day I caught her with that absolute minger. The little trollop who thinks it's okay to destroy people's lives as long as it satiates her thirst for girls committed to others. Evoked emotions I didn't know of. No, it wasn't a weight lifted off my shoulder like someone commented under the previous post. If anything, the hurting's gotten stronger, manifold. At this point, only two friends of ours know what's happened. We're yet to involve others, including our families. I'm trying to think of ways to break the news such that our parents and friends wouldn't absolutely hate her. Any help in this regard would be appreciated. Our lives are so intertwined at this point that almost everyone we mutually know are all we know of, friends or not. I don't want her being made a pariah in our circle, for that very reason. I know what I just said makes me sound like a right pellic, but I still love her and always will. I don't know when I'll move out yet, but I imagine it would be very soon because my parents wouldn't let me stay with her for too long, if at all, once they are made aware of the proper roller coaster my life's been over the past few weeks.